heroin action series, female dominated horror and sci-fi audio adventures. Deep space. We're in the cold, dark vastness of it all. Zoom into a ship, blocky industrial style, making its way across the big empty. A lone woman is slouching in a chair on the bridge. She is military hardened, lines on her face and muscles in her jumpsuit. She is beautiful the way a mountain is beautiful, where experience has sharpened her features to a point. She is speaking into a recording device. It's old but personal and well cared for. This mission is a joke. I feel like the captain of a slave ship. You already know the story. A few decades ago, we, as in humanity, found a new home. A large planet three times the Earth's size. We called it New Pangea. All the billionaires and CEOs went first. It wasn't until they all got there that they realized how much work needed to be done. Roads needed to be built, aqueducts, solar power arrays, satellites, and a sewage system, just to name a few. The affluent settlers tried to work at first, but they failed miserably. Even with the help of their droids, the workload was too much for them to bear. They came back exhausted from work each night to sit in their ecopods with their teacup poodles watching reality TV. The attendance of their fancy late night parties dwindled. They took less and less selfies on social media. Their glamorous lifestyles had begun to fade into a life of hard labor. After a few years of this, they had a meeting. They didn't move to this beautiful new planet to live the life of peasants working themselves into an early grave. So they decided that poor people should be able to pay their way into this life in New Pangea with 10 years of indentured servitude. Earth was a toxic wasteland, destroyed by our greed. You needed to wear a gas mask and shielded coat just to walk the dog. 10 years as a slave in New Pangea would seem like a vacation. That is where I come in. I've been deployed all over the solar system. I was in the Mars Uprising. I got the Medal of Honor from the Warren Titan. Now here I am, herding a boatload of hyperspeed pods filled with construction workers, teachers, engineers, scientists, and service industry workers to their new lives of indentured servitude. Just one of seven megaships chock full of people looking for a new life. I can't believe I'm doing this bullshit. This is it though, my golden ticket. When we get there, I'll get paid and a few hundred acres of land. Intruder alert. Status. Intruder alert. Incoming vessel. Shields up, on screen. The alien vessel was massive, almost the size of New Zealand. It was matte black with three fins that came to a sharp point. The ship opened its mouth. A tractor beam locked on and swallowed the smaller ship. Red alert, charge the weapons, wake the crew, now. Miscalculation, miscalculation. On the view screen, an image appeared. Three humanoids in a dark room. Only their eyes and teeth were visible. I'm Captain Hammer. State your intentions. You may call me Drew. I now have command of your ship's computer. What do you want? We want you and yours. Every last drop. Surrender now and you may yet live. No one gives me ultimatums on my ship. You may be disappointed with how this all turns out. The captain switched off the screen by hand. She went to her quarters and opened her weapons closet. She took two phasers, her hunting knife, and her grandma's lucky 38th special. She strapped the knife to her arm and slipped the ancient gun into her leg holster. From under her bed, she pulled a small metal suitcase. She opened the suitcase and pulled out six grenades, placing them on her bed. She pulled out duct tape and a small spring-loaded timer and cobbled them into one haphazard device. Then Hammer put the contraption into an old backpack and slung it over her shoulder. She muttered to herself. No way in fuck are a bunch of space pirate goths taking over my ship. Not on my watch. She took a hidden route to the engine room. Jeffrey's tubes and crawl spaces the whole ten decks down. Popped a hatch and clambered out, covered in soot and grease. She fell out of the panel hard on the floor. When she looked up, a woman was standing over her. She was rather petite, with high cheekbones and a low, gravelly voice. Captain, did you know there are giant fucking vampires on the ship? Man of war, thank God. I'm not the only one awake. Did you say vampires? Like old horror movie kind of vampires. Are you drunk? Man of War held up a giant severed head in a strange, shiny helmet. She pulled open the jaws to reveal the fangs. Those are fangs, and I think I saw him drinking blood. I'm pretty sure that these are vampires. Or maybe aliens that are exactly like vampires. That's its head? How big are these things? They're really big. Around eight feet tall. How did you kill it? Also, how are you awake? Wasn't easy. The computer wakes me up each month to check the engine and make sure everyone's pods are optimized. I was tuning up the solar generator when the computer went crazy. I've been trying to regain control, but I can't understand this language or break the codes. 
Then this big fucker came into engineering and I shot it three times with my phaser. The monster just kept coming and coming. So I took my laser drill and cut off his head. Their blood is white and sticky as all hell. It feels like eggs are cum or something. It's totally gross. Well, I hope you're down for a sequel. These big bastards are going down. I'm down to rumble. What's the plan? A large soldier appeared. He screamed in a strange language that sounded like a chainsaw backfiring in a broken arcade game. Man of War took out her phaser and started firing. Hammer flicked her wrist and the knife popped into her hand. Hammer jumped at the creature and tackled him, hitting him in the center of his body. The creature fell back surprised and Hammer scrambled, ducking under its arm and sliding like a greased eel to its back, pinning the creature's belly down. The vampire bellowed and pushed off the ground, popping Hammer up like she was a child. Hammer cursed and held on, grabbing its forehead and turning the massive soldier like she was roping a steer. Get the laser. I can't hold this motherfucker for long. Manowar took out the laser and sliced off the soldier's leg. His screams were choked by Hammer. She held him steadily as he tried to break the hold. Then the soldier grunted out something in English. Don't kill me. Oh, wow. Look who speaks English all of a sudden. What's the deal, big boy? How do we get our ship out of here? Hammer loosened her hold enough for the soldier to speak. There is no escape. Every drop of blood on this ship will be ours. You know, normally we would be elated to find other sentient life forms. We would parlay and have an official dinner ceremony with hors d'oeuvres and champagne. But you big hairy motherfuckers hijacked my ships. So you can eat my crew and my dog. So I'm going to kill every single one of you blood-sucking bastards. I am a soldier of the eternal blood. We will take your blood and join it to ours. Right. All is one. Now point us in the direction of your plasma drive. The plasma drive? A ship this big can't use propellant. They have to have a plasma drive, and if they have that... Gotcha. We knock out the core, and then they go kaboom. Good a plan as any. You will never defeat us. Crashes from behind the door. As you speak, my brethren hear my blood and call out to it. All is one. All. (laughs) Manowar reached over and cut the soldier's neck with the laser. Sorry, he was getting repetitive, and I got bored. We need to find the plasma drive. We just need to follow the heat signature. A plasma drive big enough to run a ship as big as theirs will need to be the hottest thing in the structure. She pulled out a handheld box with a transparent screen from her tool belt. We just need to find the hottest area and follow in that direction. Crashing sounds grew louder and the door bent in. Behind the door were three more soldiers as big as the first one. Let's move! Together they ran from the room, opening and closing doors, sealing them behind them. You are right. These aliens are vampires. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Man of War wraps her knuckles on the door behind them. These doors are made for people our size, not eight feet tall. Those soldiers are not the ones that made this ship. Meaning? Based on what we saw, I think something is taking over bodies and controlling them. Like a wasp will take a spider or a fungus takes over an ant. That actually makes sense. The aliens that hailed me when they initially boarded looked different than these soldiers. They were smaller. Either way, we should be prepared to fight our way through a bunch of different creatures. The captain took out her knife and set her phaser to kill. Let's get to work. Man of War smiled. She watched the thermal detector and slowly turned around the room. The detector flashed different colors, then deeper red towards the ducts. Looks like we're going crawling. The ventilation ducts came up to their waist. They had room to move forward, crawling on their hands and knees. It was a tight squeeze. She bottled down her fear, clenched her jaw, and crawled. As they crawled, the tunnel grew hotter, uncomfortable at first, then sweltering. Shh, quiet. Her eyes widened as she heard it. Behind them, something was moving towards them. It was not the sound of knees and hands on metal. It was a softer sound, a wet, squishing, uneven rhythm. Had they not been so keyed up, they might not have heard it. Man of War looked at the captain's eyes and nodded. She put away her detector and pulled out her phaser. The captain held up a finger. Go full spectrum. I will keep my shots focused. It will blind them and give me something to shoot at. Right. Man of War made the adjustment, turned and fired. The ventilation duct lit up so bright that each detail of the horrors behind them were etched into their memories. A vision from a reoccurring nightmare to haunt them for years to come. The light made the long, thin, serpent-like creatures squirm and rile up off the ground. They were segmented with crimson skin that glistened and oozed with a mucus coating. At the front of each worm was a head that opened like a spiral flower covered in sharp, inwardly curved teeth. It was a creature that belonged in the dark terrain of a sea trench. They were big, long, and really gross. 
Snakes. I hate snakes. Die! The captain fired her phaser at the closest heads. The worms screamed and exploded in a fountain of gore. As the vanguard died, the creatures behind them surged forward. The captain fired again, this time widening the stream to cover more of the approaching creatures. Get a move on. They're right behind us. Not for long. Fire in the hole! Madavor pressed a button on the projectile, tossed it down the tunnel, then turned and scurried as fast as she could, cackling as she crawled away. The captain saw the grenade midair, cursed and chased after Man of War. Three seconds later, the tunnel erupted in light and collapsed behind them. The women rolled up and down the tunnel segment, then finally came to a stop. Captain Hammer crawled forward out of the tunnel segment and stood up. They were in a smaller room that was blistering hot. The tunnel had fallen from the ceiling, which was high above them. Small wonder why the trip had left her covered in bruises. Manowar, are you okay? Yes, and by that I mean I'm alive and not eaten by vampire worms. I guess that's a win, right? Damn right it is. The far window bubbled out and gave a direct view where the ship was moving. This looks to be an observation deck. Currently, the sky was sweeping streaks of light that coursed around them. As they watched, the streaks darkened and fell into the black of deep space. Whoever they are, they have wormhole technology. Look there. Man of War pointed to the red planet in the direction the ship was heading. As they watched, the planet grew in size. That does not look like one of the mapped inhabited planets. Let's get off this ship. I have a feeling we don't want to be on it when it lands. Then let's find the engine room. It has to be close by. Together they crossed out of the room back into the hallway. At each turn, Man of War checked her meter and chose a direction. They walked in almost darkness. The lights were in safe mode, highlighting the halls in long red silhouettes. Man of War turned a corner and looked at her detector. She pointed to a door. It has to be here. They both ran into the engine room, then sealed the door. This is it. Man of War pointed to a large glowing orb at the center of the room. That monster over there has to be the plasma drive. Captain Hammer pulled out a set of grenades, then set them next to the plasma drive. I take it that the timer sets off the trigger on the bandolier to release the switch on all the grenades at once? Even simpler. It's just tied to one grenade. The explosion will set off the others. Where did you learn that? I'm a decorated veteran. You know what? Never mind. I don't want to know. No, you don't. Look around to see if you can find a schematic of the ship. There should be something that shows where the head or the energy is going via the tunnels. Found it. Here's the bridge. The two women carefully sneak down the hallway, weapons in hand. They come to the bridge. Captain Hammer opens the door, fires on the oncoming soldiers, then rushes in with Man of War. The bridge is populated by ten vampires. They are smaller than the soldiers, the original vampire that hailed them, and a few others of similar stature. All are unarmed. Man of War, doors. Aye, Captain. That will give us a few minutes to talk before we're interrupted. You have moments, not minutes. Soon your blood will be purified and we will be one. Captain Hammer turns to the nearest vampire and shoots him in the face. Now he's one with the floor. The vampire master, Drew, looks at the fallen crew member and shakes his head. You will regret your hasty actions. I don't respond well to threats. Captain Hammer turns to her left and shoots another vampire in the face. The rest of the crew scream and rush to the far corner of the room. Drew stands his ground, but his eyes grow wide and his hands are shaking. Let me guess. You all have some sort of telepathy thing going on, right? Are you feeling this? The captain advances, aims at one of the crew cowering in the far corner, and shoots him in the back. The rest of the crew scream. Now what happens when someone that is part of the whole ceases to exist? The captain shoots again. Another vampire drops. Do their experiences and thoughts continue, or do they cease to be? The captain shoots twice and drops two more crew. The captain advances on Drew. The vampire master steps back and bares his teeth. Are you afraid to die? I would guess that you are. Drew watches the captain and keeps eye contact while she lowers the phaser to his head. Earthlings. Redundant, pointless earthlings. The same as your simian ancestors, scurrying from one nut to another, crashing against the waves of time. For you, death is the end. For me, it is a passageway to my ancestral home. Okay, time to talk, Space Goth. Who or what are you? How did you find my ship? Why would a ship this size know where to come out of hyperspace to find a crappy transport such as us? 
I have lived a thousand lifetimes on countless planets. I have won victories that stretched across solar systems and suffered deaths so terrible that religions were founded on my grave. Nothing that will occur in this room in the next few moments will move me. The captain shoots next to his foot and he jumps back. You poor simian trash. You were born into a world of chaos. This ship is a collection of many different alien species working together for one purpose. Creatures from across the cosmos that have been subjugated by my blood. Yet you and your minion. Who the fuck are you calling a minion? Don't you understand? You were given to us as tribute. Your human masters gave you up willingly as payment for safe passage. We found their robot sentries and infected them just as easily as we took your ship. They sued for peace and negotiated. The terms were explicit. For each life we spared on their new planet, seven lives would be given in return. I have no master. I think he means the people who paid. I know who the fuck he means. I may be paid, but I am not chattel. To your masters, you are. They designed a fiction of needing workers for the new paradise planet, and sent for seven ships filled with new humans to infect. Proof. I want to see it or I will vaporize your punk ass right here, right now, in front of your boys. Computer, display file 3E4E4R4. Project Hamlet. The captain gestured to the comms. The blue light of the computer screen bathed Man of War's face as she read the project debrief. What does it say? But the captain already knew. She, who was a veteran of countless wars and conflicts, had seen the same story told over and over in an ever-changing cast. She felt her stomach drop. Man of War looked up, tears of anger in her face. We were sold out. The company. They knew about the vampires and came to an agreement. The seven colony ships are theirs for tribute. The ship lurched with a deep rumbling coming from the engineering section. The grenades had detonated. Hammer and Man of War are knocked off their feet. The remaining vampires fall too, but are up quickly in attack. The master pulls his head back to strike Hammer's neck. We betrayed your masters. Despite our bargain, we infected their robots with our seed. They will infect the people of New Pangea. After that, the planet will be mine. Hammer gripped her knife, stabbing into the vampire's chest, piercing his heart. The vampire drops like a puppet whose strings have been cut. Captain Hammer, with difficulty, pushes the master off of her, stands up, and looks around. The bridge is a mess of carnage and disheveled machinery. Man of War! I'm here. Man of War appears from behind the captain's chair. She looks up, smiles, and produces the minion's severed head. Got you another present for your mantle. These little ones are dumb ugly, but they're way easier to kill. The room tilts again. Machinery starts turning off. This ship is coming apart. Life support systems are failing. Manowar, quick, get us a way out of here. Schematics. Our ship is seven minutes from here. If we take the main corridors, and if the corridors are still intact. Let's go for it. The tractor beam is down. We can fly right out of the hangar. Through twists and turns, Captain Hammer and Man of War run through the alien corridors. Around them, the ship is full of flashing lights and alien warnings. As they arrive, the hangar shakes and cracks. A large fissure opens in the hangar door, creating a vacuum. Fuck! They run into the ship amid a cacophony of breaking metal and the screams of dying alien vampires. Set a course for that crack in the hull. Full speed ahead! Aye, Captain. The ship picks up speed and slams into the broken hull, ripping and shredding the already torn metal into a gaping hole. It breaks through as explosions tear apart the vampire vessel. Man of War and Captain Hammer hold on. Before them lies the Red Planet, full of danger and the unknown. This ship has been designed for re-entry. It should hold up. Grab a seat and buckle up. We're in for a bumpy ride. I'm going to bring her down on the surface. Get me some info on this planet. I want to make sure we don't land in a pool of lava. Lots of water in the atmosphere. That's where the red color is coming from. I imagine it will be humid, sweltering. The thick atmosphere prevents the starlight from reaching the surface. Swell, we can survive, but it's like a swamp on top of a mountain. The ship rattles and rumbles as it approaches the surface. Captain Hammer grunts, flips a switch, and kills the alarms. Closer and closer they come to the surface, until, with a teeth-rattling lurch, they land. Are you okay? I'm alive, which is better than I thought I'd be a few minutes ago. 
Hey, how many hypersleep pods are still in the bay? Only 12 and a half left. They must have unloaded all the rest. That's over 200 casualties. Okay, let's wake them up. We need support. Also, what's the half pod? Good news, Captain. It's your dog. He's still alive. Spock! Oh, thank God! They woke the 12 colonists and the Australian Shepherd from their pods. Three bartenders, three servers, three truck drivers, and three line cooks. Not a single soldier among them. They assembled on the loading dock. As you all know by now, our ship was attacked by hostile vampire-like aliens that have marooned us here in this strange world. Keep your eyes open, your mouths shut, and phaser set to kill. Okay, let's go outside and take a look. The captain and crew venture out. The land is bathed in mist and overcast in deep maroon. The rays from the nearest star come only in shades of rust. Here is eternal night, a planet of monsters. Where to, Captain? There. The captain points in the distance. There's a shiny beacon, silver light high up in the mountains past the swamp. Let's get some answers and find a way off this rock. And if we can't find either of those, we'll get some motherfucking payback.